is Dr. Stephanie Koch, and I am a lecturer and a senior research fellow at UCL in the Department of Neuroscience, Physiology, and Pharmacology. My lab really focuses in on how we feel touch, pain, and itch, uh, which are sensations that we feel all the time, but we don't always think about. So I am going to tell you a little bit about why I do what I do and why I find it so interesting. So in the study of touch, pain, and itch, it's often easy to forget or not really think about just how much we use these sensations in our everyday life. Because this information is needed for us to be able to guide our, our behavior or change our movements accordingly. So we use information from the muscles and from uh, the skin, on the torso, all over, in order for us to balance, for example. And that's very specific types of movement to do to keep us upright, even when we're walking around. Whereas when you're holding onto someone's hand or you're grasping a cup or a mug, you're using touch, much more of the influence of touch there. And that information guides how tightly you grip onto something or how softly you'll touch it in order to sort of feel the fine details of what's happening there. The less pleasant examples, um, which we also come across, would be itch, for example. And if you have an itch, you're immediately going to try to get rid of that sensation by scratching it, which is something we do reflexively. And lastly, we also have pain. And much like itch, it's an unpleasant sensation. It's there to warn the body that something is potentially harmful, so that you need to get, get away from it. And if you hurt yourself, you'll immediately reflex away from that painful stimulus in order to, to protect your body and get rid of harm. Because of each of these different types of movements that we have that are very specific to the information coming in, the body needs to be able to really lay out what is touch, what is pain, and what is itch. Because you don't want to scratch a, a painful toe, for example, because that's going to make it more painful. And if you really lightly touch an itch, then it's going to be even itchier. So we have these specific movements for specific sensations that need to go one by one. So how does the nervous system differentiate touch, pain, and itch so that we can react appropriately? One way is because the nervous system is very precisely organized to, for us to be able to, to tell apart um, each of these sensations. So this is just a schematic of the skin and we don't really need to look at much detail of it, but all I want you to pay attention to is the fact that we have these different types of nerve fibers coming into the skin. And these can tell us about heat pain, for example, or they can tell us about touch, about vibration. So we already have this organization at the level of the skin. And that continues as these nerve fibers come into the spinal cord, which is the first site of integration of all sensory input in the central nervous system. And that's really where I focus my research in, is in the, the, the spinal cord. But of course, even though we have this very nice organization, it's not actually that simple because we have a lot of interaction of these different sensations that happen. And we've all come across this in our lives. If you're stung by a mosquito, for example, and you become itchy, your first instinct is to scratch it. But actually scratching on its own is painful. It's just when you combine it with an itch, that it's not painful. And actually it's something that we do without even thinking you'll just scratch an itch. So we have this interact in, an interaction of a certain type of pain and of itch here. And this really continues along pain as well, because if you stub your toe, the first thing you're gonna do by reflex is rub that skin area. 
And that rubbing dampens down that type of pain that we experience. So there's an interaction between touch and pain there too. And a slightly less pleasant example here is if you burn your hand on a stove or you have a sunburn, suddenly touch becomes painful. Something that wouldn't have been painful before the burn becomes painful because of the result of the injury that you have. Why does this happen? How do we have an interaction with different sensations even though everything is so separate within the skin? Well, it happens because the central nervous system is not just a relay system. We don't just have information that comes in that then lights up the brain like a little bell, like Descartes had in this um, schematic and this drawing that he drew. Actually, what goes in is very different to what we experience, as I was just showing you before, and other experiences that I'm sure you've all had. And this first merging of different sensations and merging of different interactions happens within the spinal cord. A lot of this is down to the fact that we have very complex networks of cells and nerves that come together to form what we call circuits. And circuits are just groups of cells that connect together in order to perform a particular role. So in this case, touch or pain or itch. So what happens is we have information coming in from the skin, and this example is from the hand, that reaches the spinal cord, and then information can go up to the brain for us to be able to react in a different way to it or to um, experience an emotional response to the pain that's happening there. But in the spinal cord itself, we have these complex circuits we have different cell types in different areas that connect to the outside world via these nerve fibers that I was telling you about before. So some cells will receive touch input, some cells will receive pain input, and then they'll connect together for us to be able to experience what's happening around us. This is really what I focus my attention on in my, my lab. Which circuits are involved in touch? which are involved in pain and how do they interact. And we've started to try to unravel all of this because it's only through understanding how pain and touch and itch are processed that we're eventually gonna be able to treat it. So we don't even have an understanding of what, how a pinprick differs from a burn, for example. And we can delineate and identify each of the players that are involved in different types of sensation using genetics. So using genetics, we can target one type of cell and say, does that influence um, the sensation of touch or the reaction to touch? If we do it uh, a similar kind of interaction when it comes to heat or to pain, what happens then? And which then, uh, which of these different neurons, different cells are involved in itch? And you can see just looking at this here that we have individual circuits and connections involved in touch, pain, and itch, although we have some similar players here, as you can see. And this becomes really important because we can use all this information. Uh, to try to break down what happens in an injury. So what about if you injure your nerve and you have chronic pain? Do the same circuits that we see before change or do we have a whole new set of players that come into play? So that's really the way that we think about touch, pain, and itch and trying to find the right relief. If we can say that one type of cell is more involved in chronic pain than another, then we can try to find ways of pharmaceutically targeting that cell and dampening down pain whilst maintaining touch, whilst maintaining itch, which in the end, we need to be able to, to survive. From this, we can also start to ask much more detailed questions, like how do we learn to react to these different sensations? If you see an infant and you touch them, 
they will react with their whole body. It's a very different response to what we see in adults. How do they learn to react appropriately to touch, pain, and itch? When does that happen? Is it because of their experience? Is it because of genetics? What's happening along the lines? And what happens in an adult when everything goes wrong? Are the connections different? Are the cells different? And importantly, all this will lead us to be able to ask if we can correct when circuits go wrong. Are we able to find specific markers of pain for us to be able to manipulate the circuits and um, help people who experience that type of, of pain in their everyday life? So with that, um, I will say thank you very much um, for your attention and please do let me know if you have any questions at all. Um, just email me uh, on s.koch at ucl.ac.uk. And we hope to see you at UCL very soon. Thank you. Bye.